Hey there, good to see you today in this video. We are checking out a new desktop display that is made for photographers, for videographers, filmmakers, designers, artists, really anyone who needs a highly color accurate display for their work. This is the new ASUS ProArt PA27DCE. Now, just to clarify, in case there's any confusion, you will also find this display under the name PA27DCEK. And when you see K at the end of the name, and this is true for other ASUS ProArt displays as well, the K means that a calibrator is included in the box. So the PA27DCE is a 4K 27 inch OLED display that has USB-C connectivity providing 80 watts of downstream power. So you can connect this display to your laptop using a single cable and provide video to the screen and power to the laptop at the same time. So you can continually power your laptop while you have it connected. In addition to USB-C, there is also a display port and two HDMI inputs for additional connectivity options. There is an additional USB-C uh, input, but that one does not provide power. That is just for connecting general things. And then there's also a headphone jack on the back as well. Around the side of the display, there are two USB-A inputs there, which is uh, helpful for you know things like calibrators and other things. The PA27DCE comes with a tilt and height adjustable stand, and that stand can rotate the screen 90 degrees into a portrait orientation if that's how you want to use it. And by the way, you don't have to use the stand if you don't want to. The screen has a VESA mount compatible uh, mount on the back of it so you can connect it to a, like an arm or mount it on a wall or whatever it is you want to do with it. The display is hardware color calibrated and natively supports a range of built-in color spaces including Rec 709, Rec 2020, sRGB, DCI-P3, Adobe RGB, and there are also two HDR modes as well for HDR10 and HLG content. The display comes with a printed calibration report in the box because all pro art displays are hardware color calibrated at the factory before they are boxed up and shipped to you. And so you're able to check and see what kind of results they got when calibrating it and compare it against your own calibrations, which I'll be doing a little bit later in this video. Other basic things to know, the finish on the front of the panel, uh, the company describes it as anti-glare matte. So it is not a glossy um, OLED display, unlike, you know, glossy OLED televisions and maybe, you know, like your phone or your tablet. It also has 400 nits of brightness and the contrast ratio is 1 million to 1 because this is uh, an OLED display. Before we go any further here, quick disclaimer, just to let you know, ASUS has not paid me to make this video. They're not sponsoring this video. They've had no editorial input in this video. Uh, they've not told me what to say or what not to say. They shipped a display to me for review. And when this uh, review is done, I'm gonna box it up and ship it back to the company. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. All across the screen here, from edge to edge and corner to corner, there are millions of tiny little diodes, tiny little pixels that are all emitting their own light. Light is coming from every single one of those little pixels that you see on screen, which is the complete opposite of a backlit LCD. And OLED certainly has some benefits. One of the big reasons why people love OLED, especially for televisions, is because with OLED, you get true, realistic, deep blacks. Like black is black. And, and the reason OLED's able to achieve true dark blacks is because, well, black is the absence of light. So when an OLED panel needs to display black, it just shuts off a pixel, which is different than a backlit LCD where the light is always on and the front of the screen has to like block uh, the light from coming through, from passing through all of the pixels on the screen from edge to edge and corner to corner. They are all, they are all effectively the same because they all are you know self illuminating. They are just as bright and just as sharp and clear at the very edge of the screen and in the corner of the screen as they are in the center of the screen. So obviously there are some key advantages to OLED compared to LCD, but there are also some negatives, some negatives to be aware of as well. One being price, OLED tends to be more expensive compared to LCD, so be prepared to spend a little more money. With OLED, those really dark shadows that sit just above uh, black, OLED can sometimes struggle 
to produce those accurately. And then the third negative with OLED, and unfortunately this is something that cannot be like objectively and independently tested. I wish I could give you an answer on this. OLEDs are also susceptible to burn in. And this is a thing that happens when something is up on your screen for too long. Uh, like a static element, something like a, a menu bar or a user interface thing, whatever it is. There's way too many variables involved and way too much time involved for that matter. Um, to give it a, a definitive answer on that with you know this particular display here or really any other uh, new OLED display. Hey there, this is me in the future jumping in here. Another common downside with OLED that you'll hear people uh, talk about, and this is something you may have already noticed from earlier in this video, looking at the screen over my shoulder over there. The reason you are seeing some flickering and some pulsing of light from this OLED panel here is because the shutter speed of the camera is faster than the human eye. Asus claims that their PA27 DCE has flicker-free technology, something that they have implemented to help address this issue, and that the technology has been uh, independently certified and, uh, and tested by an independent outside group. And, you know, in general, this is the kind of thing that's really hard to quantify or, or to test in any meaningful way for you. All I can tell you is that sitting here in front of it, I don't notice you know, any issues at all uh, with it. I don't detect any flickering, even though you may be able to see it on camera. As for HDR, well, there are built-in modes on here for HDR content. Actually, let me switch this. If you can find some really good high quality HDR content, like, you know, like this over here, this is just, you know, on YouTube, um, it's pretty amazing, especially on an OLED display, because, you know, as you can see here, like the blacks, you know, in this video here, I mean, they are actually black. They are just truly black. And it's like the blackest black you can possibly get. And so the contrast ratio is incredibly high. The, the whites and the highlights are very bright. The blacks are very deep. But, you know, as incredible as HDR content looks on, you know, an OLED display like this, this particular model, the PA27 DCE, may not be right for you if you are authoring HDR content because maximum brightness here is only 400 nits and 400 is like barely enough to qualify as an HDR display. If you are authoring HDR content, you typically want a display that has much higher brightness levels, like a thousand nits or, or higher. So not ideal for authoring, but if you are viewing and consuming HDR content, um, then this would be perfectly fine for that. The built-in color modes on the display, Adobe RGB, sRGB, etc., they can be recalibrated through the ProArt calibration software. Normally, or at least with you know the, the displays that I've used from other brands and other manufacturers, normally the built-in color modes can't be touched. You can't change them. You can't recalibrate them. Like they're calibrated to whatever they were at the factory when the display was manufactured. So to calibrate the screen, you have to create your own custom modes and and eventually you just no longer use the built-in color modes at least you know i certainly don't but with the asus pro art here you can recalibrate them and these presets already have predetermined values for things like uh, brightness and color temperature and all that it takes care of all that for you so you just choose whichever mode you want to recalibrate put your calibrator on and it'll recalibrate that built-in mode which is really cool but if you want more control if you want to control color, temperature, or brightness, or anything else, you just click over to one of these user modes. And by the way, one of the interesting things about this ProArt uh, calibration software here is that it has a cloud management uh, function. If you are buying uh, a number of these displays, say for like a like a studio or for an educational you know, environment or business, something like that. Cloud management allows you to manage all the different ASUS ProArt displays that you have. Say your IT manager at your company can do this and can group them all together, can decide which displays should be using which color space, set up schedules and periodic reminders to calibrate, to make sure that, you know, everyone is on the same page, to make sure that everyone is working in the same color space, using the same settings when files are being passed around and everything. Not the kind of thing you would use if you're just solo, you know, like me, but pretty cool, uh, pretty cool feature, I think. And by the way, with those uh, factory presets, if you come over here to the device view, in the software, you can see in here how each mode has been calibrated and whether that mode is using uh, the factory default calibration or whether it's using one of your own custom uh, calibrations. Now, at the time of this video, I think there's a bug uh, in this version of the software that I'm using because even when I recalibrate one of those built-in modes, it still shows up as factory default uh, here. So I don't 
know if um, if that's intentional or if it's a bug. I find it confusing because I can't verify whether one of the built-in modes has is, is actually using factory default or one of my own recalibrations. I don't know. It's, it's kind of impossible to tell. So I'm hoping that this is just a temporary bug and that, yeah, Asus will eventually be able to fix that. Okay, so how color accurate is the Asus PA27DCE? Is it as color accurate as the company claims? Well, I can tell you after calibrating this display multiple times, I calibrated all the built-in modes, I created my own custom modes, I calibrated using my M2 Ultra Mac Studio and my MacBook Pro laptop as well, just to make sure that you know there weren't any differences between the two. And overall, the average Delta E value uh, in all of the different color modes was always uh, somewhere between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, which is excellent. Those are the kind of numbers you want to see to ensure that the colors that you are seeing on screen are true and are accurate when you are making creative decisions, when you are editing photos, videos, or whatever type of work it is that you're doing. Now, in case you're not familiar with the terminology here, Delta E is a measurement that quantifies the difference between two colors, how similar they are to one another, like a color that you have like right here in front of you in the real world and that same color being displayed on screen. The lower the number, the better. Delta E values under two are generally considered to be um, the human eye, the average person can't, can't tell the difference between two colors if their Delta E is less than two. So numbers between like 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 are very, very good and are very accurate. There was, however, one quirky little thing here with calibration that I want to share with you. Every now and then when I calibrated and I would take a look at all the different colors and grayscale values in the report, every now and then those darkest uh, grayscale values that sit just right above black, every now and then they would come back with elevated Delta E values between three and four, which obviously was not ideal. So I would then run the same calibration again, using the exact same settings from before. And then the Delta E values were better. Outside of the calibration process, I tried, you know, looking at grayscale ramps. I tried to see if there was any crushing going on. I couldn't perceive anything. I didn't see any issue. I've shared this information with Asus and they said they're going to check it out, see if they can replicate it on their end. And, um, but just in general, very good Delta E values between 0 0.3 and 0.5. As for coverage, how much of each color space the display is able uh, to display, uh, very good results between 98 and 100% for each color space, which again is, you know, exactly what you're looking for. The higher the number, the better. As for brightness uniformity, like how, you know, even the luminance values are from corner to corner and edge to edge, uh, the ProArt calibration software from Asus uh, doesn't have a function to test for that, but I installed some third-party software from Calibrite and, uh, and the results were excellent, as you would expect from an OLED display, uh, because it's not using that big, you know, IPS backlit LCD panel in the back, which can oftentimes have some fluctuations in its brightness, especially when you get up into the corners and into the into the edges. It's kind of hard for it to be, you know, completely even and completely flat uh, and uniform from you know edge to edge. But the OLED uh, display is excellent uh, in that regard, and also viewing angles are are very good. I mean, like I'm looking at it from here, and the image looks you know, practically the same as it does, you know, in the center when looking at it straight on. So at the end of the day, is the ASUS ProArt PA27DCE, is it a good display? And is it worth the money? Because this is not a cheap display, in case you haven't noticed already, I'm honestly not the biggest fan of the hardware. It doesn't feel like a premium $1,800 uh, display. I would much rather see, you know, a more solid, you know, screen, something with, you know, metal and aluminum, something similar like what, you know, Apple would design with one of their screens. At least the bezel is very thin around the outside. That's nice. Um, and the Asus branding here is minimal. It's subdued and, you know, it's not just shouting at you. So that's good. Uh, the base itself is perfectly flat, um, which, you know, doesn't seem like an important thing, but it is when you have like little, you know, desktop accessories and things that you want to, you know, you need a place to put them in because this takes up, you know, the footprint's pretty big. It takes up a fair amount of space. So you want this to be flat so you can actually, 
utilize it. So, you know, the base is good. I really wish um, every display manufacturer out there would get rid of down facing ports on the back. Like I don't, I don't get it. I don't know why people continue to do it because it makes it really hard to access them, to be, you know, plugging things in, to be unplugging them. The ports, in my opinion, should just face directly out, not down because, you know, it requires you to, you know, rotate the display into a portrait orientation or, you know, turn it over in order to access the ports. It's just, yeah, the design isn't particularly good. I wish they faced out instead. The stand itself is fine. I mean, it's pretty good. It's a little lightweight. Um, it's a little soft when like finding the, the center point. Like I wish it was a little more uh, defined. You kind of have to, you know, kind of have to move it around a little bit in order to find the find the sweet spot. And of course, with this being OLED, you know, there's no glowing around the, the corners and edges of the frame, no vignetting, no softening of the, of the brightness values in those areas. Everything is very uniform, you know, from corner to corner and edge to edge. And something else that I noticed with OLED, uh, is not just the black point and how deep the blacks are, but also with the highlights, with the whites, there's something kind of um, a little more understated and perhaps a little more realistic with whites and bright highlights on an OLED because they don't have the same luminance of that backlight like shining through uh, the screen. It's a very subtle thing, but it's something that, that I definitely notice looking at this is that it just doesn't feel like it's glowing quite as much um, as an LCD panel does like everything is just um you know it's still bright don't get me wrong but it's like a different kind of luminance it's like a more exact luminance um if that makes sense and i also wish the the finish on the front was a little more matte than it than it is it's still a little too glossy for my taste i wish they could you know tone it down even more to make it even less reflective and a little more similar to you know like what you would see with uh, with like an image printed on paper. Uh, for me and my wallet, I mean, what's you know most important to me is color accuracy. How accurate the colors are, whether I can actually trust what it is that I'm seeing on screen when I am making creative decisions with, you know, with photos or videos or, you know, other things. That to me is what's most important. And I can tell you after using this display every day for the past couple of weeks and running a bunch of different calibration tests, it is very color accurate. Thanks to ASUS for loaning me a PA27DCE for testing and reviewing. I appreciate um, their support and thank you as well for being here. If you have any comments, anything, any opinions you want to share, please feel free to leave one down below. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you want to hang out with me again in the future, remember to subscribe as well. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you next time.